It's a problem across the nation and right here in the Northwest, finding enough large animal veterinarians to work in rural communities. The University of Idaho is looking at addressing that shortage across the Gem State. I recently sat down with U of I College of Agricultural and Life Sciences Dean Michael Perella to learn more about the school's plan. There's no question that in, in Idaho and I think across the country there is an urgent need for large animal veterinarians to practice in rural communities. And so this really came to our attention about a year ago. We actually, uh, with the legislature in Idaho, we developed a task force that uh, basically is actually chaired by our department head of animal vet and food science. That's a, a Robert Collier. Uh, we also have the state veterinarian on that. We have uh, uh, the, uh, there's an Idaho Veterinary Association. Uh, there's some folks there. Uh, certainly the industry as well, uh, our, our, I would say our livestock industry is represented. And we have some legislators on that task force as well. So they have been looking at this problem over the past year, and we are in the midst of a legislative session now. Actually, I'm hoping, as I think the legislatures are, that that is coming to an end. So about two weeks ago, we made uh, presentations to both the uh, Senate and Ag House committees in, in the Idaho legislature reporting about the task force findings. So, so maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, so, and maybe I start with, you know, Idaho, I think, is one of nine states with more cows than people. So, as you know, we have about one, maybe 1 1.8 million people in the state. And I think by all counts out here, we have about 2,700,000 livestock, right? So, the bulk of that would be certainly uh, the, the cattle, and then obviously cattle also including dairy, and then obviously sheep, and then we have some hogs as well. So, so it is a critical industry. And when I think about about uh, agri the economy of Idaho, yeah, it's driven by agriculture. About uh, 20 percent of our gross domestic product is based on ag products, including you know the downstream effects of food processing, and certainly the cattle industry is a huge part of that with respect to meat to meat processing. And you know at the at the same time, you know that industry. Uh, when I think about livestock, it, it makes up about 66% of the total ag industry in the state. So to say that it's critical for, for the state, you know, it's, it's very, very important from an economic perspective. And a lot of our production is in rural areas. So when you look at this state, we have actually 44 counties in the state. And you think about each of those counties, you know, many of them being rural and, and the need for veterinarians is critical. I believe you know, the analysis done is that we have currently have a shortage of about 40 uh, 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 large animal vets in rural communities. Uh, a lot of our uh, current veterinarians that practice uh, large practice with large animals are uh, getting older and getting near to retirement. So, and in many communities, there is no large animal veterinarian. So, uh, again, it is a crisis. And when you think about the role of a veterinarian in animal production, it is critical. You know, certainly, you know, it, there's a focus on animal health and animal welfare, and so we all care about that. So that's part of what they do. But in terms of moving animals around, and in terms of certifying them and to be disease free, providing vaccinations, you know, that is a critical part of the animal industry. And without veterinarians to do that, you know, basically that industry comes to a standstill. So in a sense, maybe that encapsulates what the, the current situation is, but it's not just in Idaho. It pretty much is across the United States. There was a recent report uh, that looked at this situation nationally. And again, just reinforcing what I said, it is a, it is a national crisis. So the, the next step is to what what do you do about it? And so we have the WIMU program. We call it, uh, it's an acronym W-I-M-U for Washington, Idaho, Montana, and Utah Vet Science Education Program. And so with that program, you know, at the time it was developed, right, Montana, Idaho, and Utah did not have a vet school. So the idea is that we partner with the uh, Washington State University School of Vet Medicine, and they allow a certain number of students to come from Idaho and from Utah and from Montana every year. They enroll in the WSU program, and they basically pay in-state tuition for that education. And so in Idaho, we are allowed 11 students a year that go into that program. So it's a four-year program. So all told, we are allowed 44 
24 slots in that program. And so our expectation is that, you know, and again, this, this, I guess it turns out to be kind of wishful thinking that, that we have a need for large animal veterinarians. There's no question. So you would hope that these students that uh, basically, uh, you know, are successful and it's a very competitive process to get into vet school. There's no question about that. Now that these students then will get their degree, they return to Idaho and they practice then in, in, in large animals. And so uh, that has come true up to a point. So typically, I think every year we would have five to six students that would actually come back and practice in Idaho. Uh, now, you know, trying to track their practice in terms of where they're located and what their practice entails, you know, that becomes a problem. So in, in a sense, you know, we really can't track that. And so the issue then in front of the legislature was, you know, how do we change that? And so what, one of the issues is that, you know, the average student that graduates from vet school has a student debt of about $270,000, not a trivial sum of money. The average starting salary for a, a veterinarian in Idaho practicing in rural areas is between sixty dollars and $90,000 a year. So you can see where, in a sense, from an economical perspective, it doesn't make much sense to practice in in, in, in rural areas. And then obviously from a, you know, if you think about, you know, a practicing veterinarian, you know, dogs and cats, you know, pets in a rural area, you know, the ability to generate more income is going to be substantial, right? So there is sort of that impediment in terms of, you know, actually, you know, getting students that go through the vet science program from Idaho to come back to Idaho. So what we put forward was a plan, and there's a couple of different options here. We also looked at basically what Montana is currently doing, and there's a wonderful program, I think, that we are looking at sort of modeling from Kansas State University as well, where they are, I guess we'll say, incentivizing students to come back and practice in in, in rural areas, um, and then also the the incentive then is to, in a sense, help them pay off that loan as they go forward. So, uh, and, and again, th there's details in the proposal, so I'm just sort of giving you a 30,000 foot view of that. Uh, there's also the option here of uh, of the, the University of Idaho doing what, what we call like a three plus one, where the first year students would come and they would practice or they would get educated on this campus, the University of Idaho campus, with a focus on large animals. And then the next three years, basically, they would be with WSU and, the, and their programming. So again, a couple of different options here to try and um, incentivize. And, and also, we'd like to increase the number of students from 11 to 20 as well. And obviously, we're talking to WSU about that, and they seem to be in agreement. Uh, the other piece of the puzzle here that's come into play is that uh, in this intervening year or so, Utah State has cre created its own uh, School of Veterinary Medicine. And so we also have the option of partnering with them. Uh, they're obviously very close to us, especially when you think of the, the location and a lot of our animal production in southeastern Idaho. Uh, Utah State is not that far away. Moscow is actually much further. So in that sense, you know, doing some partnership with them is also an option. So all these things are on the table. We've made this recommendation to the legislature. Uh, there was pretty, uh, you know, it, 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 sometimes you can do this in front of these committees and, you know, they, they uh, you know, there's, there's, it's a difficult legislative session. They're all busy. But uh, especially when we made the presentation in front of the House Agricultural Committee, uh, they actually got excited about this. They recognize it's a crisis. And, and I think we're going to see maybe some legislation um, that will be uh, primed for, for this year, sort of for, for the next session to try and address this issue. You know, in a sense, we're trying to address a critical issue and it looks like we're making progress, but we'll have to see how the legislature actually responds. Dean Perella, you were talking about working with Washington State University, also working with Utah State University down the road. Is there any interest or is it even economically feasible for the University of Idaho to look at maybe branching out into their own, own veterinary school? That is a possibility. I think there's lots of dollar signs around that that would, um, uh, you know, be be difficult to overcome. I, I I'm not clear exactly what the, the uh, what Utah State did for their facility and in terms of the investment there and the ongoing expense. Right, we actually did 
uh, talk about that a little bit with the legislature. I think there's some interest there, but I, you know, that that's a that's a a, a significant financial hurdle to overcome. So, so we will see how this how this progresses. You know, as I indicated, I think the animal industry in Idaho, the livestock industry, would be excited about that. Uh, but we'll again have to see how that how that plays out. Once again, that was University of Idaho College of Agricultural and Life Sciences Dean Michael Perella.